And good evening to you. Welcome to high school basketball action on Central Illinois Sports, live from Griggsville Perry High School for tonight's matchup between the 21 and 4 Griggsville Perry Tornadoes and the 16 and 5 Camp Point Central Panthers. Alongside John Hull and Damon Emmerich, I'm Charlie Hull, and this is the Great Rivers Bank pregame show on Central Illinois Sports. A rematch of one of the finest games we've seen this season at the Winchester Tournament, where Griggsville Perry won 43. Or excuse me, Camp Point Central won 43 to 40. Griggsville Perry looking to avenge the loss. Tornadoes with four losses on the season. Both times they've come in back-to-back -back instances. And Camp Point Central is coming off of a loss just last night at home to Menden Unity. We'll talk about all of that, this matchup, and more on the Great Rivers Bank pregame show after this. Are you looking to streamline your banking? Great Rivers Bank has just what you need with our streamlined checking and savings accounts. Earn high interest rates or get cash back on debit card purchases with your qualifying account, plus ATM fee refunds. Certain qualifications required. Call or visit our website today at www.greatriversbank.bank to get started. Great Rivers Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. At Logan AgriService, we consider it a badge of honor to be recognized as one of the larger independent suppliers of crop protection chemicals in the Midwest. We've worked hard for years to provide you with the access to the best herbicides, insecticides, and fungicides from top manufacturers because we know without you, our local farmers, we wouldn't be here. When you have questions, call our local experts to discuss what works best for your fields and your situation. Or visit us online at loganag.com. Serving agriculture since 1962. Now that the new year is upon us, it's time to focus on the important things like Wi-Fi, strong connections, and high speed. This is the perfect time to tell you to call CASCOM today. We specialize in all of those important needs. With our high speed fiber optic service, we make your life easier. Whether that's online streaming, gaming, or just wanting good local TV channels, we have it all. So give us a call today at 1-800-252-1799. Here at Little Jess, we value hard work, dedication, integrity, and leadership. We have a respect for heritage and tradition and believe in the pursuit of building legacies, breaking records, and putting forth award-winning results. That's why supporting schools and local teams is one of our favorite and most exciting parts of our business. For over seven decades, we strive daily to use those same values as a foundation to meet our community's automotive needs and support our future generations. Little Jess Motors, serving our community since 1969. Welcome back on the Great Rivers Bank pregame show to the Nick at Griggsville Perry High School. The 21 and 4 Griggsville Perry Tornadoes having one of, well, another one of these 21 seasons. And uh, this group of kids, Damon, this a senior group, a senior heavy team for this squad, has had a lot of success over their careers when it comes to basketball. But one of their nemesis teams has been this uh, Camp Point Central outfit. Yeah, this is a uh, Camp Point Central squad that has always played this Griggsville team tough. I believe uh, maybe after their seventh grade state championship team, this Panther squad was the uh, first loss that those kids experienced in the eighth grade. But just a team in this Panther squad that comes out and plays aggressive. And, Charlie, we, we typically see this Panther squad as in most games because they lock in and key in on the defensive end. And I look for them tonight to be even more keyed in on the defensive end because head coach James Barnett was not pleased with his squad's performance last night. I'm going to guess that today the uh, conversation, defense was a uh, significant point of conversation on that. Well, as they lost to Menden Unity, who doesn't have a bad squad by any stretch, especially when Melvin McMillan is rolling right along as he had a 20-plus point night. And then uh, Ethan Voss scored, I believe, 17 or 18 points in a starting role as well in one of his higher point outputs of his career. Uh, but if you were Griggsville Perry, you didn't necessarily want Camp Point Central to be more focused than usual, and I'd say that's what you're about to get here tonight. You didn't need a Panther squad to come in with even more motivation to come out and play hard and look to win this game. But Griggsville Perry's got to come out and know that Camp Point's going to be aggressive on the defensive end, but the Tornadoes need to come out and try to throw the first punch. They lost that game at the Winchester Tournament in the third and fourth place game after having a nine-point lead in the third quarter. So Griggsville Perry should have some extra motivation to come out in this ball game and look to get some revenge for one of their four losses on the season. GP is winners of seven straight since that loss to Camp Point Central. Beat Route 
48-32, Liberty 65-39, Midwest Central 79-23, Calhoun 54-34, Rushville 51-37, and Beardstown 36-22 to claim the Triopia Tournament Championship. Their most recent victory was on Tuesday evening as they beat Pleasant Hill 77-43. Camp Point Central in the midst of quite the run of games here due to their normal schedule combined with some makeup games. It started last night with that loss to Minden Unity at Griggsville Perry tonight at Rushville tomorrow at the Cage Gray Superfan Shootout on Saturday to play Van Farr at Pittsfield Monday, home against Illini West on Tuesday before they'll finish out on Friday night at McComb. So quite a stretch in their season. And then they end the regular season on the 13th against West Central, so not really uh, too many gimmies left on James Barnett's team schedule. Yeah, he wasn't afraid to uh, schedule a uh, tough second half of the season, and that's one where uh, you could easily look and say the Panthers might lose three or four games, or if they can come out and win, you know, let's say they win five of those games, you got to feel pretty good because that's a vicious schedule that you're heading up against. Greg Perry won the Junior Varsity Contest rather handily tonight. I believe their JV team is still undefeated on the season, if memory serves me correctly. Damon is not agreeing with me at the moment, but I believe that they have they just lost one. They lost one game, at the uh, and that was at the uh, Triopia Tournament right. last week. All right, so uh, just one loss on the season, so a lot of bright things ahead for this GP Tornado program as well. And they're getting ready to come out, I believe, and warm up here in just a moment as well as they had a little extra talk in the locker room and I think that's one of these moments you might be seeing Garrett White trying to make sure his team's ready to go and locked in from the get-go in this contest. Well they've got to understand the opportunity that's ahead of them. You know we've talked with head coach Garrett White his squad has two games before the seating for postseason and this Camp Point Central squad and then they'll come out next Tuesday against South County and very important for this squad to, you know, it's going to be tough games, but they need to win both games in order to lock up either a two or three seed in their subsectional because if you're Griggsville Perry, you really want to try to avoid being in the same regional as West Central Cougars. And the uh, host sites for those are at New Berlin and at Liberty. So if you're Griggsville Perry, you wouldn't mind taking a little shorter trip to Liberty either if it uh, could work out in your favor. Both teams out of the court now warming up in preparation of tonight's contest. We step aside on the Great Rivers Bank pregame show back with more on Central Illinois Sports after this. Best Systems Insulators offer insulation for homes and commercial buildings throughout Central Illinois and the surrounding areas. We take great care to ensure that the insulation products we use are the best fit for our clients and their project. We understand that different buildings have different needs and that each of our clients has a unique set of goals. Let us work with you to find the best solution for your next project. Call Best Systems Insulators at 217-285-6005. That's 285-6005. Or visit them online at Go Best Systems. Systems.com. Kate Marable, real estate broker with Hometown Real Estate, would like to say good luck to all area teams and hopes everyone has a successful and healthy season. When you're in the market for a new home or would like to sell your home, be sure to call Kate Marable. Kate is a lifelong resident of the area and has experience in first-time home buyers, FHA, USDA, and VA loans. Call Kate Marable at 217-370-9809. That's 370-9809 for Kate Marable and Hometown Real Estate. Cedar Lake Campground has been owned and operated by the Cranberg family for over 50 years. Located off of Highway 24 between Coatesburg and Camp Point, Cedar Lake Campground is a quiet family campground that you're sure to enjoy. With 60 RV spots with water and electric and our five-acre lake, it's a perfect spot for a weekend spent fishing, spending time with family, and enjoying the great outdoors. Find out more about Cedar Lake Campground on Facebook or call 217-455-4602. Here in Pittsfield, we're focused on maintaining a healthy, diverse economic base to increase opportunities for our residents. Economic factors greatly affect a community's overall potential, and we strive to continue our prosperous culture. The availability of both commercial and industrial employment centers and new lucrative entrepreneurship opportunities are major assets for growth and development here in Pittsfield. In addition to providing employment and income to people, Pittsfield also boasts several tax incentive districts to further facilitate economic growth. Examples of growth and success can be seen throughout Pittsfield. 
This field is located within Pike County and widely known for the abundance of white-tailed deer and is also home to companies that have capitalized from the region's natural resources. Located over on Madison Street, Whitetail Properties is a major local and international employer that truly embodies the local and economic spirit of Pittsfield. State-of-the-art communications and telecommuting are available here. Be sure to catch their televised series throughout the week on the Sportsman Channel. Come grow and be a part of something great in Pittsfield, Illinois. I like hard work. I mean, I kind of was raised that way. You really do make a difference. You're, you're helping ship out food to feed people. Someone's got to do it, and I don't mind doing the hard work of it, you know. That gives me meaning, and I do go home rewarded. Every time I drop off a pallet, it's kind of corny, but I look back at it with a sense of pride. I'm like, yep, I built that. It looks awesome, and then I just drive away. I love it. When my life needed meaning, I chose Doc. Before the Tavern, I was very active, worked out at the Croc Center, I would say less than a week. Well, of course, Amy tells me I couldn't do squats. She even wrote it in my discharge paper, great big, sandy, no squats. So I did a couple. Oh my word. Don't tell her. I knew she was going to, but I have the best job in the world to get to work with these patients. Make your dream kitchen and bath a reality with help from Pike County Lumber. We'll create a design to fit your lifestyle and your needs. Quartz countertops, quality onyx that offers dozens of colors. From start to finish, trust the knowledge and experience at Pike County Lumber. Loading the kids in the car, brokering peace in the back seat, mastering the snack handoff without even looking. Why are simple things sometimes so complicated? Thankfully, with auto owners, insurance doesn't have to be one of them. We work with independent agents who keep insurance simple, so you can worry about more important things, like figuring out what's growing in that cup holder. That's simple human sense. Contact your local auto owners agents at BNP Insurance Agency, Barber Agency. See Pat Vandevelde, Caleb Vandevelde, or Mary Coltis. Go find our location at 114 South Madison Street in Pittsfield. Back on the Great Rivers Bank pregame show, locations in Pittsfield, Perry, Liberty, and Hannibal. Great Rivers Bank serving you with the best in banking services no matter where you live in the region. They have a location near you and always online at greatriversbank.bank. Member FDIC and equal housing lender. Greensville, Perry, and Camp Point Central matching up for you tonight on Central Illinois Sports. No game for you tomorrow night as... We'll take a little night off to get set up for action from the 7th grade IESA Class 1A through 4A state quarterfinals and semifinals on Saturday with locations in East Peoria, Macon Meridian, El Paso Gridley, and Normal Kingsley. Hope you'll join us for all of that action on Central Illinois Sports. Get signed up for your IESA membership to be able to watch all of the action. What is it about this Camp Point Central team, Damon, that makes them so good? You talked about the defensive side, but the team is, they're not deep. They're not overly big. Now, they are quick, obviously. That uh, speed program that Brad Dixon's put into place has uh, helped. They can, they can leap a little bit, but really overall talent-wise, this is not what I would call top to bottom one of the more talented basketball teams in the area, but they continue to get the job done most nights. Well, I think when you think this Panther squad, the – first thing that comes to my mind, Charlie, is, is no fear. And we've seen that, whether it be on the gridiron, on the basketball court, on the baseball field, that there's no fear there. And these kids are going to come at you, and they don't care if you're taller than them. You're not really going to be stronger than them. They don't care if you're taller, if you're more athletic. They're going to make you work for everything that you get. And some teams just fold when it comes to that. They're not strong enough to handle the pressure, or they can't take it for a full 32 minutes. And that's what, what I think of when I think of this Panther squad. You've seen the emergence of Elijah Ginnenbacher becoming a little bit more of a scorer here in this second half of the season. And, you know, they'll need that because you've got to take some of that scoring pressure off of Nick Moore from the guard spot. Yeah. The big thing for, for Elijah is we've seen him be able to step out and knock down some threes. And if he can hit some shots and allow them to open up the middle a little bit more for Blewett 
to be able to put the ball on the floor and attack the bucket. Gavin Blewett's one of the most athletic kids you'll see on the basketball court this year, and he does a nice job. If you give him an opportunity to put the ball on the floor and attack the bucket, he's very good at that. So the more Panthers that can knock down the shot from the outside, the more freedom that's going to allow Blewett to do his thing on the offensive end. For Grixville Perry, of course, again, the senior group has been very successful. One of the things, though, Dama, that they have in mind is postseason success, and they're down the final stretch of a senior season for a group of guys that have played together for a very, very long time. But the way this Tornado team will be remembered is what's going to happen there in late February and early March. This is a team that has a shot to do that. They've got to have that belief in themselves to get it done. Well, right or wrong, this senior group coming into high school has had a lot of pressure put on them, some from themselves, some from the outside area. But this is a group that has a bunch of talent, but they've got one last chance to, to make a splash. And, you know, a 23-25 win regular season is great, but – Records restart when you get to postseason. And for Grigsville Perry, they've got to make sure that they take care of business through the end of the regular season in order to try to give themselves the most favorable matchup come regional time. Now, not to say that if they're not in the same regional as West Central that they're guaranteed a regional championship victory. But I think if you're this tornado squad, your goal needs to be to try to avoid the Cougars in regionals because that has not been a favorable matchup for this squad over the last few years, especially this year. I think I'm, I know what you're about to say, but what's one of the big keys in this game for Grigsville Perry? Well, let's replay every game the Tornadoes have played so far this year that we've covered. And the first thing they have to do is they have to control the glass. And Grigsville Perry this year, we've seen they have excellent first shot defense. Do a very good job there. Teams do not shoot the ball well against Grigsville Perry they're on actually that first one of, shot. They're actually one of the best defensive teams in Class 1A in all the state when it comes to points given up per game. Yeah, and I think that average went down because even in the championship game at Triopia last week, they held Beards down to well under that average. But for Grigsville Perry, they have excellent first shot defense. But what has hurt Grigsville Perry in the games that they have lost this year is they have allowed other teams to control the offensive glass. And for Grigsville Perry... Part of that, you think with the Tornadoes, you're accustomed to seeing them play a 2-3 defense. It's what they're known for. They don't come out of that often. But in a zone defense, you have to still find somebody to put a body on when that shot goes up. And that's something the Tornadoes do not do well. They try to out-jump teams, but it allows their opponents to get better positioning or to just come in there and take the rebound. Shot goes up. They've got to turn around, put a body on somebody, and if they can do that, they're going to be extremely tough because I would say, Charlie, in the games that we've called where Grigsville Perry has lost, they've probably given up at least 8 to 10 points from offensive rebounds, if not more, because we're not talking just putbacks. We're, we're talking where they've fouled and sent somebody to the line. And that's what we've also seen for Grigsville Perry. They've had a tendency to get into some foul trouble this year, and it's not on that first shot defense. It's put. Offensive rebounds where then they try to block the shot and results in fouls. We wanted to make a special mention and a congratulations to the Grigsville Perry 8th graders beating Southeastern for the regional championship tonight, 39-13. So the Tornadoes will play in the sectional contest. Also want to say hello to Coach Ken Stouffer who's in attendance tonight. And always good to see Coach Stouffer back in the gym after a little bout with some illness. And he knew you weren't going to keep him out of this gym too long. And always glad to see Coach alongside here even if he is talking to Jeff Kremlin we won't hold that against him here for Camp Point Central it's been a real up and down last week or so big up beat West Hancock who'd beaten them I think two times at least this season get that victory kind of got that monkey off their back but then come back and lose to Minden Unity and I'm not saying it's a bad loss but it might be actually a really good loss this time of the season for James Barnett's team well it can work one of two ways it can allow a snowball effect or it's going to give you some added motivation and you know, I don't think the Panther squad needs any additional motivation when they're playing Grigsville Perry, but when they come off of a loss to a rival in Minden Unity, they're going to be extra prepared for this game against this Tornado squad. It is the Great Rivers Bank pregame show. We step aside here. We are about two and a half minutes away from the Star Spangled Banner, the starting lineups of the play-by-play. -play. Stay tuned on Central Illinois Sports. Griffin Signs in Time at 122 South 9th Street in Quincy is a full-service sign company that can complete any project. From fully wrapping your entire fleet of vehicles, digital signs, storefronts, to creating small banners and signs. 
The right and professional signage is the difference of getting the job, heading folks in the correct direction to find you, or creating a brand recognition for potential customers. Put the right signs in your customer's mind with Griffin Signs in Time. Call 217-228-7470. Are you short on time or budget, but your family is hungry? It's time for the Maya Authentic Mexican Restaurant in Pittsfield. Try the Maya Special, a crowd favorite. Delicious grilled fajitas, steaks, nachos Mexicano, salads in the tortilla bowl, the tastiest salsa and cheese sauce around, and the fastest service anywhere. You can afford it. It's the Maya Mexican Restaurant on Washington Street. Call ahead with your order and you can pick it up in the drive through 217-285-4526. The Maya Restaurant. Restaurant in Pittsfield. Yeah, I'm at Farm and Home for Essentials. Did you find everything you need? No, apparently not. Thank you. No other place has it all, like Farm and Home Supply. Time for the Farm and Home Supply starting lineups on Central Illinois Sports. Nobody has it like your local Farm and Home Supply, from snacks and hoodies to power tools and lawn chair and much, much more in between. Visit your location nearest so you or online at farmandhomesupply.com. 16 and 5 is Camp Point Central. Let's start at a guard, the six foot senior Nick Moore. At a second guard, the 5'9 senior Caden Lohmeyer. And at a third guard, the 5'8 senior Drew Pavin. At a forward, he's a 6'1 junior, Elijah Ginnenbacher. And at the other forward, the 6'2 senior, Gavin Blewett. Blewett, Ginnenbacher, Pavin, Lohmeyer, and Moore for Camp Point Central. For the Greensville Prairie Tornadoes, 21 and 4 on the season. They'll start at a guard, a senior, 5'9", 145 pounds, Wyatt Lipkamen. At a second guard, his twin brother, the 5'9", 145 pound senior, Lane Lipkamen. And at the third guard, it'll be Michael Myers, the 6'3", 155 pound senior. Out of four, Dane McAllister, the 6'4", 200 pound senior. And at the other four, the 6'5", 155 pound junior, Logan Fensick. Fensick, McAllister, Myers, Lane, and Wyatt Lipkamen for Griggsville Perry. And I like the weights being in the starting lineup as well, Damon, as long as they don't you know, list your eyes. <laughs> Well, the camera adds a couple of 10 pounds, and so there's normally six or seven cameras on us. <laughs> so on the, in the program, we get to pick our own weights. Yeah. We'll sell you also, by the way, to our cameraman, John Hall. Happy 38th, 838, oh my goodness, 38th birthday. Appreciate the wife and kids allowing you to be with us here tonight. It's knee camp jumping to the center for Camp Point Central against Myers for Griggsville Perry. And the tip is up and controlled by the Panthers. As Kneekamp gets the possession, and we are underway here on Central Illinois Sports. Sub Kneekamp at the starting lineup for Lomar to start the night. And Peterson for Blewett. Game time decision. Black and gold is Camp Point Central on the jerseys tonight. Ball tipped, run down near the half-court line by 
Genenbacher works it out top paper. Now to Moore on the right side. Just underway here in corner number one from the Nick. Genenbacher with the top of the key. They'll work it over to Paben against the zone defense, but GP not afraid to come out there and extend. Yeah, they'll extend, and when you look down low, they've got 6'5", 6'4", 6'4", as Paben takes the first shot of the game. A three, it's up and no good. Fensick with his first board of the ballgame. Into the front court come the Tornadoes with Wyatt Lipkeman on the bounce. They turned Camp Point Central away on their first attack, trying to get the early lead. Little pick and roll action, the McAllister bump. Kicks it out left side. Myers for the trail away. It's off the iron, no good. And Genenbacher runs down the board for the Panthers. Into the front court, Moore gets it right side. Off to Pavin. Guarded by Lane Lipkin, he said he's doing a little blister problem on that right hand. Yeah, dove on the floor in practice yesterday a few times and uh, developed a blister on the hand. Shooting hand. So I don't dive on the floor anymore. Here's Genenbacher for a three, no good. And on the rebound, a push off by Peterson. Cole Peterson will be whistled for his first. That'll be the first team foul of the quarter as Michael Myers came down with his first rebound of the ball game. Just underway here in quarter number one. No score on the PCRE Real Estate and Auction scoreboard. McAllister with it on the arc left side. Look to the high post, wasn't open. Now on the wing, it goes to Wyatt Lipkeman. Free throw line, Fincic. Ball quickly moved around by the Tornadoes. They get it reversed on the right side now. Logan Fincic with a touch. Looks for Lane Lipkeman at the free throw line. Over to Myers. Shot put up is no good. And a ball out of bounds. We'll say last touch by Camp Point Central. Lane Lipkeman tracked down the offensive rebound there for Greg Joe Perry. So it'll be Michael Myers with the inbound. 6.05 to play here. First quarter action on the PCRE Real Estate and Auction Scoreboard. Myers inbounds to Wyatt Lipkin. He'll his layup up and good. Grigsville Perry's got the first lead of the ball game. It's two to nothing. Wyatt Lipkin's done that a couple times in this gym over the course of his career. And he'll do it by creating a steal off the defensive end if you're not careful. He's got some of the fastest hands in the area. Paven with it, gets it out top to Moore. A little hesitation move, drives in, draws the foul, and it'll be bought a bounce to Camp Point Central underneath. Wyatt Lipkin will be whistled for his first. Team foul number one against the Tornadoes, so both teams with one foul apiece. Grigsville Perry with the 2-0 lead, 5.39 to play here, first quarter action. Ginnenbacher will throw a pass, it's tipped and stolen away. Lane Lipkeman got the chip, Wyatt Lipkeman got the steal, and then ball was knocked away from behind. It hit the official in the back of the head, and he had a slight moment of memory loss, but he got the call right. <laughs> Which way are we going that way? Is it Sunday? Yeah. Rusty is still in the Navy, I yeah. believe, as well. 5.33 to play in the first. Two nothing tornadoes. The last time these two teams met up, 43-40, so don't expect a game to get real high scoring here. Here's Lane Lipkeman trying to post. Kicks it out to Fincic, a 6'5 junior for three. Rims it and out, no good. A rebound, good board for McAllister, then takes it down low. Throws it out of the wing to Myers. Top of the key, Fincic. Around the horn, it comes to Lipkeman with the layup shot, no good. Fouled, and he'll head to the free throw line to shoot two. Caden Niekamp will be whistled for his first. Team foul number two. Nice job there by McAllister to get the offensive rebound. Really had to fight through some contact to maintain control, but was able to kick it out and allowed Griggsville Perry to retain possession. And it'll send Wyatt Lipkeman to the line. Lipkeman with the only two points of the ball game. First free throw for him is good. Alina Express here to serve you with walk-in medical care when you need it on the main campus of Alina Community Hospital now, 640 West Washington Street, just across from McDonald's. Walk-in and drive through services. Learn more at alinahospital.org. 4 nothing. Griggsville Perry as Wyatt Lipkin knocks down a pair of free throws. And Panthers bring it into the front court with five minutes to play here. First quarter action. Moore has it on the wing right side. Out top it goes to Genenbacher, now Pabin. Patient against Lipkeman on the wing to Genenbacher. Surveys the floor. Takes a single bounce of it over to Moore. Moore going to try the dribble drive in. Shot up no good. Rebound loose on the floor. Comes down to Peterson. He'll get it to Genenbacher, whose shot is up on the up and under no good. Two different shot deflections that time by McAllister. And this time it comes the way of GP. The end of the front court. McAllister has it on the right side. That's to Wyatt Lipkeman. Tornado's the 4-0 lead in the basketball. 4-20 to play in the opening quarter. Right side, Myers. 
surveys the floor. Free throw line, McAllister give and go back to Myers. A pretty pass and a pretty play for the Tornadoes, and they lead 6-0. You know, we've seen Dane McAllister this year do a really nice job. He's been able to thread a pass th through some pretty tight spaces right there. Did a nice job right there to find Myers for the layup. Here's Pavin, turns down the three, kicks it over to Moore. Moore on the pull-up jump shot from 15, no good. Peterson got the offensive board. He'll work it off to Moore. Second chance opportunity here for Camp Point Central. Can they capitalize? Out top, Pavin. Dribble drive, Vin drew contact. And it'll be on the floor. Big foul right there for the Tornadoes as Wyatt Lipman's whistled for his second. Griggsville Perry does not have Brody Rush in this ball game. We see him come off the bench quite a bit when one of the Lipman's gets in foul trouble, but he's homesick in this ball game. Been battling the flu. Several Tornadoes have been battling illness. Logan Fensick was a questionable decision coming into today. Garrett Woodward missed yesterday's practice sick as we see him check into the ball game for Wyatt Lipkin, who goes to the bench with those two fouls. A lot of influenza going on around the area. Looks like we saw Blewett come into the game for the first time for Camp Point Central as well. Genenbacher with it. He'll work it out top the knee camp. Over to Moore for the three. It's no good off the iron. It clangs, and the rebound to Fincic already his third. Into the front court. Ball shoveled off to Woodward. Now Lane Lipkin out top of Fincic for the three. No good. Blewett runs down a rebound. His first into the front court more quickly as they get it up the sideline. Paven works off the pick and roll to Genenbacher now. Pass down low, stolen away by an active Dane McAllister. Through the pass to Myers, knocked out of bounds by Moore right near the half court line. This is the second turnover for the Tornadoes. Or against the Panthers. Both steals for the Tornadoes. And it'll be Griggs Hill Perry basketball. They've got the 6-0 advantage, 2.48 to play here in the first quarter. So low-scoring action here. Not a shock, as Charlie talked about earlier. Here's Woodward trying to find McAllister. Good idea, and what a highlight that'll be on Channel 10 later as that ball came almost through the camera lens. Threw that pass just a little bit too hard there, hard for McAllister to handle. So Griggs Hill Perry with their first turnover of the ball game. Blewett to knee camp, attacks, kicks, right side more. Good look, three, lets it fly, no good. And Myers gets the rebound for the Tornadoes. You don't see more miss too many of those open looks. Here's Myers slashing across the lane. Shot up on the right-hand runner is up and good. And GP leads 8 to nothing on the PCRE. Real estate and auction scoreboard. Blew it into the front court, into a double team. Trying to get out of that predicament. Throws a pass and they'll call a foul here. A block against Fensick, I believe. That'll be Fensick's first third team foul of the quarter. We're seeing the Panthers are getting the ball into the front court pretty quickly. Griggsville Perry's got to tighten up a little bit to not allow the Panthers to get the ball middle. But overall, Griggsville Perry's done a nice job the first six minutes on defense. Had the 8-0 advantage and really have not given the Panthers too many easy opportunities outside of the three we saw Nick Moore miss. Here's Blewett on a tough turnaround shot, no good. Myers yet another board. Myers with his third board. Into the front court to McAllister on the bounce left side. 142 to play in the first period. Tornadoes want to work a little clock here and try to add to this 8-0 advantage. Nice job of sharing the basketball so far. Here's Myers now out of control. Shot up no good. Off of him and out of bounds. And a ball length of the court to go for Camp Point Central as... Here comes Caden Lohmeyer into the contest. He'll sit down knee camp. Tough right there as Michael Myers was dri driving to the bucket as Lane Lipkin was going out towards the corner. Lipkin's man inadvertently really kind of got in front of Myers and halted his momentum. Here's Gennenbacher, bounce pass down to Moore, hangs in the air, can't get it to go, but that's just what you talked about a moment ago. That ball got to the middle of the floor pretty easily for Camp Point Central. Yeah, the foul's going to be whistled against Myers, and we're seeing that Griggsville Perry's letting that middle get open up too quickly, and when you're running a press, if you open up the middle, that's the easiest way to beat the press. As Nick Moore will go to the line looking for his first points of the ball game, the Panthers' first point of the night comes via a Nick Moore free throw. The Pike County Express is your local family-owned newspaper. They've been serving Pike County since 1991. Check them out each Wednesday on a newsstand near you. 
Moore with the second free throw on its way. It is in and out, no good. Myers gets away with a lane violation right in front of the official. Go on the release, it looked like before Myers had released, or uh, uh, Moore had released, this foot was all the way on the paint. One minute to play in the first. 8 1 GP with a good first quarter here. Now a bad pass, it's going to be a turnover. Fensick will run it down to avoid the breakaway, but it'll be bought out of bounds on the sideline for Griggsville Perry, or excuse me, for Camp Point Central, right in front of the Griggsville Perry bench. Not a very good job right there of movement and spacing for the Tornadoes. We've seen, even though they've only got eight points thus far, the first six and a half minutes of the quarter, as Moore will pull up from the free throw line and knock it down, the first field goal of the ball game for the Panthers. But Griggsville Perry on that one was a little bit stagnant and led to the turnover. Lane Lipkeman on the dribble into the front court. Less than 40 seconds to play in the opening period. Now less than 40 seconds. I lied and I'm sorry. Out top, Fincic gets it to Myers near the center circle. Works it out to Lane Lipkeman. Tornadoes also should get the ball to start the second period. That's what the arrow says. The Panthers, after getting their first field goal of the ball game, Really stepped up the defensive intensity here as Griggsville Perry trying to hold for one shot with 12 to play in the quarter. But Ginnenbacher's all over Lipkin. Pass on the right side, out of the hand, and it's a held ball. It'll be a possession error to Griggsville Perry with 3.8 seconds to play. So they'll get the basketball here, but won't get it now at the quarter break. Let's we'll see Wyatt Lipkin back into the ball game. He'll sit down McAllister, Myers to inbound with 3.8 seconds to play in the first. Myers looking here, looking, throws it in on a contested pass, tip right back to Myers. He puts up a runner, it's a three, and they will call this a foul on a three. And Myers, what? Foul's going to be whistled against Nick Moore. So they're going to say it was on number three, but only two-tenths oh. of a second. So just enough time for a tip here. Here's a tip. Your inbounds pass is tipped and loose as the buzzer sounds. And after one quarter, it's Griggs will parry eight. Camp Point Central, three. For nearly 40 years, the Niebuhr Funeral Home has been serving our area with professionalism and compassion. This is our business, our hometown. You can be assured we take great personal pride in serving your family in your time of loss. We're locally owned. We're your friends and neighbors. We care about you and your family. Niebuhr Funeral Home, with locations in Pittsville and Barrie, serving our community with compassion and respect. One size fits all. That may be all right for an adjustable belt or cheap sunglasses, but when it comes to your financial needs, no one wants a one size fits all strategy. Derek Harris is your Pike and Adams County area Edward Jones financial advisor. Derek Harris's most important goals are yours. That's why Derek will take the time to understand your needs so he can recommend personalized strategies with your goals in mind. Contact Derek Harris today at 217-222-7173. Knowing you, that's how Edward Jones makes sense of investing. Member SIPC. After a quarter, it's Gregsville Perry 8, Camp Point Central 3. Central will have the basketball to start quarter number 2. Well, after one quarter of play, the Panthers just 1 of 9 from the field for 11%. Gregsville Perry 3 of 8 for 38%. Both teams with two turnovers apiece. And it will be Panthers basketball after Gregsville Perry scored the first eight points of the ballgame. Panthers scored the last three. And more with the basketball to start the second quarter. Wyatt Lipkin on the floor still with those two fouls. Big for him not to pick up an early third. Here's a ball swiped away and stolen away. Turnover on Camp Point Centro is their third. Into the front court, Wyatt Lipkin gets it to Myers. Out top, Lane Lipkin fakes the three, drives, kicks. Back out top, Myers for a three-point shot, no good. And Gennenbacher secures the rebound to Pavin who brings it across for Camp Point Central. They've not shot it well, but they're only down five. And James Barnett never panics, does he? Just never panics. When you get down 8 nothing, most coaches have called timeout, and he just kind of was like, uh. Well, he trusts his guys that are out on the floor. These guys have played a lot of varsity basketball, and he knows what they're capable of. Gannabacher reverses to Lohmeyer. Now on the wing pavement, just underway here in quarter number two. 
Out top, Pabin looks for the opening. Now to Ginnenbacher with a hand in his face from Fensick. Fensick 6'5", and what's that wingspan like, Bray? 6'10", long. Right side with it is Moore. He has all three for Camp Point Central. Here's Ginnenbacher. They turn down the three to Lohmeyer for the tray on the way. It's no good. Three-pointer three pointer has not been hot for either team to start the game. And the rebound down to the Tornadoes. 0 for 9 combined are the Panthers and Tornadoes from behind the three-point line. That would be the definition of not so hot. Right side with it is Wyatt Lipkeman. Top of the key, McAllister for a three, and another over 10. I think somebody turned the fans on or something. When... Yeah, there was a little bit of a breeze there for a moment. 6.08 to play in the half in an 8-3 contest. As Lohmeyer has the touch, way out front for Camp Point Central. Ooh, dangerous pass. Ball blew it right back out to Pavin. Now Lohmeyer has it swiped and stolen away. Into the front court, Myers on the run out. Shovel pass to the wing, and Lipkman lost his footing. Kept it alive to Fensick, though. Now why Lipkman gets it back, and he said there's a slick spot there on the floor. Be careful. Myers with it on the bounce against Pavin. 5.33 to play in the half. Ball knocked loose. Run down, though, by Wyatt Lipkman. Now McAllister as the seas parted. He goes to the rim. Shot no good. Rebound. Blue it had it, then had it out of his hand and saved by Pavin. Into the front court. Moore. He'll attack the rack. Run around block. Off of him and out of bounds. And it'll be Grigsville Perry basketball, as you'll see on the Northwestern Mutual Instant Repo. Nice recovery there by Myers to come from behind and block the shot as he was being challenged as he attacked the basket by McAllister. Mc Myers recovered and did a nice job there uh, not allowing Moore to continue to go to the bucket. 5.05 to play in the half. Still 8-3. That was the quarter score. Here's Wyatt Lipkeman. Ball tip. Run down on the wing. Crystal Perry's got the size advantage out on the floor right now. They've got to look to get the ball down low as McAllister will get it to Fensick, streaking back door, and Fensick's got his first two points of the ball game. But take advantage of the opportunity while you've got the height advantage out on the floor and really look to do some two-man games or like that. Fensick got the back door cut off of a screen. Fensick did a really nice job. He caught that ball high and was it was right toward the rim. Let's, let's look at that again. I... I really like this play by Logan Fensick, who we've seen shoot it on the outside. Look, the ball gets to the high post. He sneaks in on the backside, and he caught that thing and put it right up in a hurry. He didn't want anybody to and that's, have a chance to come block the That's the, the shot. key. Didn't put the ball down on the floor as the inbounds pass comes to Ginnenbacher. His shot is no good. Lane Lipkeman with his first, his second rebound. But Fensick kept it high, and a big man, the worst thing he can do is put the ball on the floor or bring it down low because that allows somebody else the opportunity to get it. So nice job by Fensick. And again, that was an assist right there from Dane McAllister who found a man cutting back door. McAllister's had two nice passes in the ball game to allow for easy buckets. Fensick on the wing now. Gets it to Lane Lipkeman left side. Halfway home here in quarter number two. It's Grigsville Perry with a 10-3 lead on the PCRE Real Estate and Auction scoreboard. Myers on the drive in, gets to the rim with a left hand, shot up and in for two. And GP has the nine-point lead, their biggest of the contest. That's a sign of maturity right there for Myers because a lot of times he would have taken that three. Instead, he put the ball on the floor, attacked the bucket. Nice job shielding Blewett, putting it up with his left hand. And Myers had another two. That's six as Grigsville Perry knocks the ball out of bounds on the other end. We'll see Caden Niekamp back into the ball game as Lohmeyer will take a seat for the Panthers. And Myers is really good at that, right? I mean, he's long, he's lanky, he's explosive when he gets to the rim. I mean, it's it's tough to stop him once he gets downhill. Oh, it really is. He does a good job there. And you know, Myers, if he's not hitting from outside, he has the ability to create a shot. And sometimes what we've seen is when Myers has a couple of drives to the bucket where he scores, that outside shot starts falling for him. He just needs a little bit of confidence there. Here's more now. He's banged around a bit and a foul whistled on one of the tornadoes. Foul's going to be whistled against Lane Lipkeman. That'll be Lipkeman's first. First foul of the quarter. Out of bounds on the baseline for Camp Point Central. They didn't score until the 118 mark of the first quarter. They've not scored here in the second. We may not hit the point total that either one of these teams had themselves in the third and fourth place game. 
As that was a 43-40 victory right now, we have 15 points combined with three minutes to play in the half. And Grigsville Perry not making it easy at all on Camp Point Central on this end of the court. They're really extending their zone defense out well beyond the three-point line, which you wouldn't have to do against this Panther squad as they don't have a lot of shooters, as Ginnenbacher is going to put one up and knock it down. Your First three-pointer of the ball game for the Panthers. And uh, yeah, Damon can just shut up now. Sounds like the opposite of the broadcaster jinx. I'm going to just turn the headset off and eat that cake that John Hall was supposed to bring for his birthday. He already ate it. 2.27 to play in the half. 12-6 the score. Here's McAllister trying to go to work in the paint. Kept his pivot foot stuck to the floor. Ball knocked out of bounds on the deflection by Moore. It stays with GP. Myers to inbound right in front of the Panther bench. Throws it in the backcourt to Lane Lipkeman. Pass on the wing goes to McAllister. He'll put it on the deck out there against Blewett. Ball tipped and stolen away by Blewett. Man, he was quick to the ball that time, wasn't he? Larceny in the layup for Gavin Blewett. And cuts it down to a four-point game. Wyatt Lipkeman quick with it into the front court. Out top, McAllister. Myers, now Lane Lipkeman. Gives it over to Brother Wyatt. Grigsville Perry didn't end the first quarter very well, trying to avoid that here in the last 145 of the half now. Fensick with it, left wing. Works it on the wing. That's to Wyatt Lipkeman. Out to Lane now, back to Wyatt. Good thing there's not a shot clock. Grigsville Perry a little out of sorts on this possession. Here's a pass to the corner. Wyatt Lipkeman, three, and the answer won't fall. Rebound on the play comes down to Ginnenbacher. He wants to push the pace into the front court. Drives inside a little Euro step. Shot off the window, no good. Rebound pulled in by Myers, his fourth. Outlet pass lane Lipkeman to McAllister. He'll attack down low. Kick it out to Myers for the three, no good. Rebound, Fensick soars and gets it to go on the putback. And we'll get a timeout taken here by Camp Point Central on the Adams Network timeout. Adams Fiber, the local, and provided the ulti ultimate internet experience with Wi-Fi 6 and internet packages with speeds up to 1 gigabit. Visit followthefiber.net. I have to speak to you about something that is uh, concerning me. Heard you and your mother talking about this Arlo fella. You're dating someone? Yeah. Dad, Arlo's the name of the new security cameras that we got from our service provider. Not a boy. Oh boy. Ah, uh, not a boy. Apparently, we just learned that it's a camera named after a boy. Why don't you name it Peter? Following the Adams Fiber timeout taken by Camp Point Central, they'll have the basketball length of the court to go after the putback basket here by Logan Fensick. Talk about his development here in his junior season. Yeah, you know, we've seen the second half of the season that Logan's really kind of come alive. We saw in the Winchester tournament against West Central, he knocked down a couple of big threes. Logan's long and lanky. He's still growing into his body as he weighs about what my right leg weighs, but he's learning how to use his body as Pavin attacks the bucket. Shot is no good. Fensick with another rebound for Grigsville Perry. That's his fifth of the ballgame. 42 seconds to play in the half. Tornadoes a six-point lead and the basketball. Would not be all that surprised to see them hold for just one final shot here. And but, You know, the thing for Fensick is he's he and Woodward are going to be relied on heavily next year for Grigsville Perry, but we're seeing them give some valuable minutes and some big contribution this season. Wyatt Lipkin with it now. 18 ticks to play in the half. Against Moore. What a matchup there. Now to Myers with 10. Takes a glance up at the clock. Gets it to McAllister. Now Lane Lipkin. Looks back door. Wasn't open. And we'll get an offensive foul here. As they'll say, Lane Lipkin extended the right arm. And Pavin draws the charge. That's the second foul of the ball game against Lane Lipkin. Turnover number four against the Tornadoes. And a big one right there as Grigsville Perry's not going to get a shot at the end of the second quarter. Two, one, Pavin. That looked like it was after the buzzer, but they'll count it. They will count the basket, the official says, and it makes it a 14-10 score at the halftime break. The Little Jess 
Motors halftime show. Good contest, low scoring game, but a fun one so far. As we head to halftime, it's Griggsville Perry on top of Camp Point Central, 14 to 10. Today's halftime show is brought to you by Little Jess Motor Company in Quincy, Illinois. We'd like to introduce you to the brand new 2024 Dodge Hornet GT all-wheel drive offered at 32325. The 2024 Dodge Hornet pays homage to the iconic legacy of Dodge performance. The Hornet GT comes equipped with a 2.0 Hurricane 4 turbo engine that boasts up to 268 horsepower, making it the most powerful compact utility vehicle on the market. Stop by Little Jess today and take this eye-catching CUV powerhouse for a spin. Stotsy Automotive and Tire, located at 201 Adams Street in Camp Point, Illinois, is your local automotive repair shop. Whether you need an oil change, brake job, alignment engine repair, or new tires, Stotsy Automotive is here with honest and competitive pricing. Call Reagan and his team today to schedule your appointment. 217-740-5010. That's 217-740-5010 for Stotsy Automotive and Tire. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. You've heard that phrase many times in Rod Prentice in Pittsfield. Your State Farm agent is the guy you can count on to be your friend and neighbor in the insurance business. He has a complete line of insurance available for you from State Farm Insurance. You can reach him at 217-285-6930. Our family trusts Rod Prentice with all of our insurance needs. Stop by their office on Washington Street and see the girls in Rod Prentice, your State Farm agent, 217-285-6930. I'm Chris Nichols with PCRE Real Estate and Auction here in Pittsfield. For 15 years now, I've been specializing in selling farmland and hunting properties along with homes and commercial real estate. Whether it's helping a seller get a premium price out of their home or assisting a buyer to find the farm of their dreams, I pride myself on providing elite customer service. Give me a call today at 217-473-3777 if I can help with any of your real estate needs. Or feel free to jump on our website at pcrerealestate.com. Back with you on the Little Jess Motors Halftime Show. It's a 14-10 advantage for Riggsville Perry on top of Camp Point Central here at the halftime break. Low scoring contest. Griggsville Perry took their biggest lead of the game. Central kind of popped back at the end of the second quarter to cut it a bit closer here. And Damon Emmerich has a look at some of your halftime stats. Yeah, Griggsville Perry jumped out to the early 8-0 lead before the end of the first quarter with a score of or with a lead of eight to three jumped out to a 12-3 lead there early in the second quarter which is their largest lead of the ball game at nine before going into the half with a four point lead no ties no lead changes in the ball game four turnovers apiece for each team cam point nobody in foul problems nobody with more than one foul for griggsville perry wyatt and lane lipman each with two fouls apiece. We're at the half on the Little Jets Motors Halftime Show. Griggsville Perry 14, Cam Point 10. Back after these messages with the rest of your first half stats. From bag to field to bin, Prairieland FS is your home for quality seed. We treat it right here at one of our local facilities, deliver it right to your farm, and then provide the propane to fuel your bins. Have confidence in what you're putting in your engine with our energy specialist. They're focused on maximizing power, fuel efficiency, and engine protection to keep you going. We're neighbors serving neighbors. Prairie Land FS, your leading supplier of choice. Pressures on you would like to wish all the area teams the best of luck this year. If you're looking to get your team shirts or just looking for spirit wear for yourself, remember Pressures on you. We have over 1,400 square foot of retail space in our shop. Stop by and see us and check out our offerings. Business lets us help you promote your brand. Decoration methods we offer include screen printing, embroidery, and laser engraving. Thank you to everyone in our community for the support over the last 16 years. Thank you for supporting local. Pressures on you, 506 Westwood. Camp Point, Illinois. Jersey's world, Jersey's world, party time, excellent. Blue. Party on, Jay. Party on, Todd. Jersey's Bar and Grill in Camp Point, where you can find the best burgers, sandwiches, and steaks, all locally sourced from GJY Beef Company. We love beer. We love beer. Ice cold draft beer. Enjoy one of our many craft selections on the patio. All at Jersey's Bar and Grill, 109 East Jefferson, Camp Point, Illinois. You're getting thirsty, bold, refreshing. 
fresh. So good. <clears throat> I mean, dude. Back on the Little Jess Motors halftime show, Little Jess, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram, 3431 Main Street in Quincy, Illinois, just across from Quincy High School, the place to go for your next car purchase. Their staff is committed to making the process simple and making sure each customer's needs are met. Learn more at littlejessmotor.com or stop by and see them in Quincy, Illinois. It's a 14-10 lead of the halftime break for Greeks Barry, and Damon's got to look at the rest of your halftime stats. Well, the Panthers are just 4 of 17 from the field for 24%, 3 of 11 from 2, and 1 of 6 from the three-point line. The Panthers are 1 of 2 from the charity stripe, scoring for the Panthers in the first half. Two points apiece for Gavin Blewett and Drew Pabin, and Nick Moore and Elijah Ginnenbacher with three points apiece. For Griggsville Perry, they are 6 of 16 from the field for 38%. 6 of 9 from the 2, 0 of 7 from behind the three-point line, and 2 of 2 from the charity stripe. Three players in the scoring column for the Tornadoes. Wyatt Lipkin with 4, Logan Fincic with 4 points to go along with 5 rebounds, and Michael Myers leads the way for the Tornadoes with 6 points and 5 rebounds. It is a 14-10 lead. Griggsville Perry on top. They'll have the basketball to start the second half when we come back after this final timeout of the Little Jess Motors Halftime Show. When it comes to financial planning, most financial companies focus on your income. At Northwestern Mutual, we focus on your outcome. That's why we know what it takes to succeed both on your balance sheet and in your life. It takes the right financial partner who looks at where you are now and where you want to go and design a financial plan to take you there so you can achieve the life you're after today and every day after. Focus on your financial outcome with Northwestern Mutual. Contact Sheila Davidsmeyer today. Her office is located at 311 West Washington in Pittsfield, Illinois. Or visit SheilaDavidsmeyer.nm.com. The Northwestern Mutual Life Insurance Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. GSI grain bins are built using the highest strength steel available. This allows you to store more grain to maximize your profitability and efficiency. Buy one now and receive our winter discount program. Make sure Lumber Company, your GSI grain bin dealer. Game Masters is your headquarters for all your hunting gear. We have more than just camo hunting attire. Come check out our casual lines of Sitka, Under Armour, North Face, Columbia, Drake, and more. Pursue your prey with these off-road quiet cat bikes from Game Masters. Easy to transport and perfect for your next hunting adventure. Game Masters, we're passionate about the outdoors. It's time to be thinking about tax planning. You can count on Illinois FBFM for accounting, consulting, and tax preparation for farmers and businesses in Pike, Brown, and Adams Counties. Call 217-593-7233. That's 593-7233. Illinois FBFM can take care of your farm accounting needs. Get your accounts in order for this tax season. Contact Jesse Schumann and Emily Matthews at Illinois FBFM in Camp Point. Working for you. At Full Throttle Parts, we do spray on bed liners, a brand called Patriot Liner. It is very elite. It actually enhances the resale value of anything you put it on, on or off road. Go Full Throttle! Go Full Throttle. Uh huh. Yeah, I'm at Farm and Home for essentials. Did you find everything you need? No, apparently not. Thank you. No other place has it all, like Farm and Home Supply. Are you looking to streamline your banking? Great Rivers Bank has just what you need with our streamlined checking and savings accounts. Earn high interest rates or get cash back on debit card purchases with your qualifying account. Plus, ATM fee refunds. Certain qualifications required. Call or visit our website today at www.greatriversbank.bank to get started. Great Rivers Bank. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Today's halftime show is brought to you by Little Jess Motor Company in Quincy, Illinois. We'd like to introduce you to the brand new 2024 Dodge Hornet GT all-wheel drive offered at 32325. 
The 2024 Dodge Hornet pays homage to the iconic legacy of Dodge performance. The Hornet GT comes equipped with a 2.0 Hurricane 4 turbo engine that boasts up to 268 horsepower, making it the most powerful compact utility vehicle on the market. Stop by Little Jess today and take this eye-catching CUV powerhouse for a spin. Thanks to Little Jess Motors for being our halftime sponsor, as always, here on Central Illinois Sports. It's a 14-10 Grigsville Perry lead. They'll have the basketball to start the third quarter with their original starting lineup of McAllister, Fensick, Lane, and Wyatt Lipkeman, and Michael Myers. Camp Point Central counters with Niekamp, Blewett, Gennenbacher, Pabin, and Moore. We're underway here in the third on Central Illinois Sports. Tornadoes have led the entirety of this contest. Throw pass down low. Tip put a run down by Wyatt Lipkeman. Down the right wing, it's Fensick. Looks in the corner to Myers. Bounce pass baseline. Quick pass from Lane Lipkeman to Wyatt Lipkeman. Out on the wing. Fensick now run off the three-point line. Central has been in that man-to-man -man all night on the defensive end. Really, if you're these two coaches, you can't be upset on the defensive effort here tonight. Neither team shooting well. Both teams doing a good job on the defensive end. Not making anything easy as Myers picks up his dribble is trapped in the corner. Finally finds Wyatt Lipkeman down low. His shot is no good, but he's going to be fouled on the shot by Ginnenbacher. So Grigsville Perry comes out their first possession of the second half. Have the ball for 50 seconds, and it ends in a trip to the line for Wyatt Lipkeman. Lipkeman two for two for there in the ball game. His team has the 15-10 lead as Wyatt knocks down the first. Fuller's Universe open Monday through Thursday, 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Fridays to midnight, Saturdays 4 to midnight, a great menu, and always a good time when you're with your friends at Bowler's Universe in Pittsfield. Lipkoon can't get the second to go. Rebound is tipped around and controlled by Nick Moore. That's his first board of the ballgame for this Panther squad. Five-point GP lead, central on the attack. Trying to cut into it here. Moore to pavement on the right side. There was one three-pointer made between the two teams in the first half. One for 13 in the first half. If you're central, that's kind of part of your game, right? You've got to knock down some of those long balls. Yeah, and I'm really looking to give the ball to Gavin Blewett. I'm probably putting him in the middle where knee camp is as the screener and hoping you can find him free throw line extended and let him create off the drive. Here's Moore on the wing left side. Going to get free to pull the three. Now he'll drive in, little runner up right hand, no good. And McAllister with the rebound for the Tornadoes. They'll work at the Fensick now, Lane Lipkeman. Tornadoes looking to build on this five-point lead on the PCRE Real Estate and Auction scoreboard. Top of the key, McAllister gets it off to Lane Lipkeman. Little left-handed bounce. Around the perimeter, the Tornadoes move it. Right side, good look. Lane Lipkeman, three ball, and he'll knock it down from deep. And GP with an eight-point lead. They've led by as many as nine in the contest. Right now an eight-point advantage with 5.50 to play in the third. Lane's first three points of the ball game. Here's Gennenbach around the right wing. Think about it is if you're Camp Point Central, you don't want to fall behind by much more than this. They're not a high-powered offense. No, not at all. And we'll see if Nick Moore gets the ball right wing. Pavin will put up the three. It is no good. And Wyatt Lipman with his first points uh, or his first rebound of the night and Griggs Hill Perry with a chance to have their largest lead of the ball game on this possession. Lipkeman on the wing right side that's Lane who just hit the three finds his twin brother Wyatt Lipkeman back out to Lane to Wyatt. Play a little pitch and catch on the right side of the court here at the Nick. Here's a drive by Myers kicks defensive and a foul underneath going to be called against Caden Neekamp. That'll be Neekamp's second second foul of the quarter and really I thought the whistle there came late because I thought there was contact on the drive but the foul that they called there was really because Myers and Niekamp got their feet tangled up. 5.05 to play in the third out of bounds on the baseline for GP. Comes to fence a good look right side three it's no good and Pavin with the rebound. Into the front court to Moore on the right side pull up jump shot off the rhythm dribble no good. Blew it is going to be called for a foul on the box out. Blue, it'll be whistled for his first. Third foul of the quarter. 
And GP might have uh, might have caught a break there. Possibly so. 4.45 to play in the third. But they, again, have a chance to add to their biggest lead. Myers works it out to Lane Lipkeman. Nick Moore and Pavin just do such a good job keeping their man in front of them. Don't allow them to get past. Now pass to the corner left side. Wyatt Lipkeman from distance knocks it down. The Tornadoes lead by 11. That was because Kneekamp went flying by out front. It was two quick passes and an open three. And we'll get an Adams Network timeout taken by Camp Point Central. 4-13 to play in the third. It's GP up 21-10. Central Illinois, are you looking for a great deal on a vehicle? Well, at Westtown Ford, we have a lot full of vehicles, cars, trucks, vans, SUVs. We've got them all, and a lot of them, at Westtown Ford in Jacksonville. Time out taken by Camp Point Central. They face their largest deficit of the contest, this 11-point lead for GP. After the Adams Expert timeout, top-notch local computer sales and service call Adams Experts 217-214-3423. Just one of those days it looks like for Camp Point Central that the shots aren't falling. The shots aren't falling, and you know we saw Gennenbacher hit a big three early in the first half. Blewett has the ball knocked away, stolen away. McAllister with the steal. It's the fifth turnover of the ballgame against the Panthers. Myers on the run out of the front court to the rim and in for two. GP keeps pouring it on here. They lead 23 to 10. If you're the Tornadoes, that game of the Winchester tournament, you had to feel like you kind of gave away a nine-point lead in the third quarter. I think Griggsville Perry in that ballgame just kind of let up. They took their foot off of the gas, and right now that's the last thing they want to do is they just had a big steal right there. But you can't allow Cam Point to work their way back into this. Here's Pavin, jump shot, pull up, jump shot, good. Pavin, it's a little fade away, and Central makes it 23 to 12, their first points of the quarter, and that's happened every quarter so far. They have not scored. I mean, that's, that's actually, actually the, the earliest, earliest they've scored yeah. in a quarter. Yep. Credit to the GP defense on that one. Here's Myers out front. Free throw line, McAllister. Look for the back cut now to Fensick. Little pick and roll action there. Now they'll get Wyatt Lipcomb involved on the bounce against Pavin. Under three to play in the third. An 11 point lead and the basketball for the Tornadoes. Pass on the right side goes to Lane Lipcomb and now to McAllister at the high post. Helps facilitate things from there to Wyatt Lipcomb. Looks to break his man down off the dribble. Now pulls it back out. You know, when we talk about McAllister, don't forget that he sprained his ankle in that ball game at the Winchester tournament. Tried to play the rest of the game, but just wasn't the same. As Fensick's going to get the three-pointer from the corner, shot's no good. Taven with the rebound for the Panthers. That's his second. It's been late to score for Camp Point Central, but they finished the first two quarters strong. They've got their work cut out for them now, though, as they trail by 11. Get him, Bunker, out top, Pavin. Pavin dialing long distance off the rim, no good. Rebound down to Myers. He is sixth already. Fensick into the front court, finds Wyatt Lipcomb near the sideline right side. Under two minutes to play in this third quarter. GP looking for their 22nd victory of the season as a ball knocked away by Elijah Ginnenbacher. Den ball allows Lohmeyer to check back in for Camp Point Central. Griggsville Perry, Michael Myers will inbound, 147 to play on, in the third quarter on the PCRE Real Estate and Auction scoreboard. Wyatt Lipton will cross the time stripe with a minute 40 and get it to McAllister. Right side now, Fencer. To Lane Lipton into the corner. 
Moore swipes at the ball and now gets called for the reach-in foul. That'll be Moore's second, fourth foul of the quarter against the Panthers. And the Panthers are picking up their defensive intensity as we've seen them do in the first two quarters. It's almost like once they get that first bucket, they start to pick things up. So Grigsville Perry's going to have to do a better job taking care of the basketball, but they've got to have better spacing and better movement. They're getting a little bit stagnant right now, and that's starting to slow them up on the offensive end. One of the things I don't know that I've seen out of this Camp Point Central group much is they're frustrated right now. Yeah. That's, that's some carryover from yesterday. I think it's today. carryover from yesterday and just, you know, they're not accustomed to, to losing. And these kids take a lot of pride. And, you know, the other thing is, is Lohmeyer is going to be whistled for the hand check out front. That's his first, but it is the fifth foul of the quarter. When shots aren't falling, you notice kids start to get a little bit more upset, frustrated out on the floor as Wyatt Lipman goes to the line. He's three for four from there in the ball game and make that three for five as he leaves the first one short with a minute three to play in the third quarter. Located just north of Pittsville, that's Real Men Twine, your local headquarters for concrete lawn ornaments, statues, fountains, benches, and much, much more. Stop by and see Rick and Tracy Real and their gang at Real Men Twine north of Pittsfield. Wyatt Lipman splits a pair. He's got nine, and it's a 12-point Tornadoes lead. Panthers with the basketball, and they'll have the basketball to start the fourth quarter. Barring a tie-up, of course, in the next 45 seconds or so. Pabin directing some traffic, trying to get the offense in motion. That ball kicked by Lane Lipkeman. Ball out of bounds on the sideline here for Camp Point Central. Lohmeyer, the man to throw it in. Gets it again, Bacher, free throw line shot, knocks it down. Ginnenbacher's first point since he hit that three? Yep, Ginnenbacher's got five. He's actually the leading scorer in the contest with those five points. 24 seconds to play in the third. Tornado's looking to add on to this 10-point lead in the waning moments of the third period. Wyatt Lipkin with it, guarded by Paver. Moving his feet to keep the man in front. Now with 10 seconds to play in the period. Close to five, breaks the five count with the dribble. Now down low, Myers going to go to work against Blewett. Fadeaway shot, no good, but a foul called on. Gavin Blewett and two shots for Michael Myers. That's Blewett's second, and Myers to the line. Myers with eight points. Wyatt Lipkin with nine. But Myers has a chance to add to his total as his team's got the 24-14 lead. Myers is good with the first. As you saw in the Northwestern Mutual replay, thanks to Sheila Davids, Meyer, and her team in Pittsfield, Look, good defense so right at the end, then he tried to swat it. Yep. Myers' second is no good. Elijah Ginnenbacher with the rebound, his shot. Length of the floor is no good. And that's how we will end this third quarter of play. After three, Griggsville Perry 25, Camp Point 14. Back to fourth quarter play by play after this. Now that the new year is upon us, it's time to focus on the important things like Wi Fi, strong connections, and high speed. This is the perfect time to tell you to call Cascom today. We specialize in all of those important needs. With our high-speed fiber optic service, we make your life easier. Whether that's online streaming, gaming, or just wanting good local TV channels, we have it all. So give us a call today at 1-800-252-1799. Best Systems Insulators offer insulation for homes and commercial buildings throughout Central Illinois and the surrounding areas. We take great care to ensure that the insulation products we use are the best fit for our clients and their project. We understand that different buildings have different needs and that each of our clients has a unique set of goals. Let us work with you to find the best solution for your next project. Call Best Systems Insulators at 217-285-6005. That's 285-6005. Or visit them online at Go Best Systems. Systems.com. Welcome back to Grigswood Perry High School. It's GP 25, Camp Point Central 14 after three. Central has the basketball and their work cut out for them if they're going to try to come back and steal a victory here. Yeah, the Panthers so far in this ball game, they're shooting just six of 23 from the field for 26%, including one of eight from the three-point line. Grigsville Perry 43% on nine of 21 shooting. Lohmeyer, pass to the corner and more. And the sky high for that one. Looks down low. Actually had a good pass to Ginnenbacher, but it goes between his mitts and out of bounds on a turnover 
on Central to start the final quarter. That's the sixth turnover of the ball game against the Panthers. And Lane Lipkin will cross the time stripe for Grigsville Perry, his team with the 25-14 lead. And as you said, if you're GP, this is hammer time. Got to put the foot on the, you know, on the pedal right here, and it's going to be an offensive foul against Myers as he pushed off against Pavin. That's a turnover against the Tornadoes, their fifth. And Myers is whistled for his second foul of the ball game. Take a look on the Northwestern Mutual replay. See, they're kind of banging off each other, and pretty good salesmanship that time by Pavin, I'd say. Blew it with it on the wing right side. Fake the three, now launches. It's off the iron, no good. And Grigsville Perry's done a really good job. There's not been too many second-chance opportunities in this game for Camp Point Central. It's like we talked about that before. Under seven to play. GP the double-digit lead and the possession. They've had some long possessions in this game. Dallow Myers, little reverse layup. Pretty look. And a finish by Myers with the reverse. Ties the largest lead of the ball game. Myers in double figures with 11. And Panthers have to get a bucket on this possession. Moore with it left side. He'll try to drive in. Caught down low. Shovels it off to Ginnenbacher. And this will be an offensive foul. That's eight. We've got salesmanship all over the floor here tonight as Ginnenbacher whistled for his second. Team foul number one of the quarter. Turnover number seven. Rumor has it if the Tornadoes win, Principal Jillian Tice might throw a pizza party for somebody tomorrow. I'm in. We will be here at noon. 6.19 to play. On the PCRE Real Estate and Auction scoreboard, it's a 13-point Grigsville Perry Tornado lead. Not even sure the five-second count was going there, but Pavin was all over Wyatt Lipman. Myers with it on the right wing. Over on the left side of things, it goes to Lane Lipkeman, now Wyatt. Back out top, Lane Lipkeman. Burning a little clock with this 13-point advantage. Fensick back to Lane Lipkeman. And this is where you look for that back door eventually because the Panthers will start selling out trying to prevent the handoff. Yes. Timeout before there could be a five-second call. Timeout, Grigsville Perry. Tornadoes 27, Panthers 14, 536 to play fourth quarter action. It's an Adams Network timeout. At Farmer State Bank, we believe in community, teamwork, and success. We're thrilled to announce that we've been named the best place to work in Illinois and the best community bank in America this year. Join us on this winning team where your dreams take center court at Farmer State Bank. We're a team. Discover the difference. The best place to bank, the best place to work. Because when our community wins, we all win. Where community, excellence, and opportunity come together. Farmer State Bank. Member FDIC. Equal housing lender. On the Adams Fiber timeout, Fast, reliable internet that doesn't buffer no matter what life throws at you. It's Adams Fiber. Visit followthefiber.net. Timeout was taken by the Tornadoes. was just their first of the contest. There's some of those young Eagles walking into the gym. They want a regional tonight, Damon. Yeah, if they win next week, Charlie will get to call their eighth grade game on Central Illinois Sports as we're bringing both the seventh and eighth grade classes one through four live here on Central Illinois Sports. Head coach of the Eagles, Matt Hansen, sitting in his, what looks like his Lakers pullover jersey, sitting on the bench now for Gregsville Perry. He's over there going, mm bop bip ba da ba da mm bop Sure, the first time he's ever had an mm bop mention. Here's Myers for a three, no good. Rebound, McAllister tips it up on fall. Rebound, fits it. Up and in. Makes it 29-14. I just hope that was not copyright infringement right there. I, that's the only words of that song that I know, actually. I think that's the only words of the song, possibly. Next, we'll be doing the Macarena. Ah, uh, like a bull. Here's more, and a foul will be called on the floor here. John will be turning the camera towards Charlie here shortly for the Macarena. The real excitement will be trying to get out from behind the desk. <laughs> oh, everybody's a comedian. Here's more left side three. They need it. He gets it. 
Moore's first points of the second half, and I'm not sure that may be Moore's first shot attempt of the second half. There have not been many. He and cuts into a 15-point Grigsville Perry lead, which was their largest of the ball game. Here's Wyatt Lipkin now as he has the finger roll over the front of the rim, manned in for two. He's got 11 to lead all scorers. He and Myers both with 11 for Grigsville Perry. Pavin on the dribble into the front court for Camp Point Central. Over to Moore. Moore for a deep three. It's no good this time. Rebound pulled in by McAllister. Off it goes to Wyatt Lipkin under four minutes to play. GP has to feel pretty good about where they are at right now. You can control the clock. Here's a pass down low. Fensick in the post. Goes to work. Turnaround shot no good. Maybe not the shot that Garrett White wanted to see for his squad, but good to see Logan Fensick being aggressive right there. As the Tornadoes get a steal on the other end, Wyatt Lipkin pushes front court. He'll get it off to Logan Fensick. Shot up and good. Fensick fights through the contact right there. A big bucket for Logan Fensick. Gives Grigsville Perry their largest lead of the ball game as Gavin Blewett will be whistled for the foul. That'll be his third. And, Charlie, I really don't know if that's his shot early in the season that Logan Fensick makes. He'd go to the free throw line, but Logan's got stronger through the season. For him to be able to fight through the contact there from Blewett is a sign of maturity. It's a sign of a player that's got more confidence. He's got nine points. His team's got the 17-point lead, and really Logan Fensick is starting to blossom here in his junior season. Well, he's a weapon. He's 6'5", huge wingspan, can shoot it from the outside, can get to the rim. Logan's just learned how to play stronger as the season has gone on, knowing that at 6'5", he's going to be playing down low, but he's going to be going against guys that have more varsity experience. Logan is a junior, but because of how many seniors are in this class, he hasn't had to play a whole lot of varsity minutes. So he's really learning how to be a varsity player throughout the season and doing a nice job here. Moore gets it on the wing left side, drives in, runner up right hand, good. Makes it a 34-19 game. Being down by 15 is a lot, but when you've only scored 19 in the game, it's uh, almost insurmountable. On the PCRE Real Estate and Auction scoreboard, 2.48 left. Wyatt Lipkeman, two Fensick, little uh, shot up from four, no good, and the rebound down to Neekamp. He'll work at the pavement into the front court for Camp Point Central. Out top, Moore wants to attack the rack. Shot up on the run, no good. They'll call that a foul. On the floor. And be bought a bounce. Thought he got away with traveling possibly there. Yeah, but I do agree that it shouldn't have been a shooting foul. It was a foul on the floor. So McAllister is going to be whistled for his first. Third tornado foul of the quarter. And that spot down there on the floor tonight seems like it's collected perspiration quite frequently. James Barnett asking the official, is this the Heisman pose? Here's Moore now. Had the ball stripped and stolen away. Fensick with the tank away into the front court. Wyatt Lipkeman goes at knee camp. Shot up. Good. Nope, on the floor. And they'll wave it off. Good if they would have called it a shooting foul. I think it should have been good. Might have been a little bit of a, hey, we didn't call this a shooting foul on the other end, but it's going to be a foul against Kneecamp, his third, second Panthers foul of the quarter. There's a dribble drive in, ball stolen away now here. Into the front court with it is Pavin. Little scoop shot up, they'll call that a shooting foul, and he'll shoot two shots. Fourth foul of the quarter against GP. McAllister will be whistled for his second. Pavin will go to the line for the Panthers. His first free throw attempts of the night will be on the way as his team trails 34-19 with 2-11 to play in the contest. Griggsville Perry, two minutes, 11 seconds away from picking up a big victory as they will prepare to do battle against South County next Tuesday night. But they've got to hold on to this 14-point lead, 34-20. Pavin at the line. His first free throw attempt was good. He gets the second one to go as well. And Camp Point's going to call a timeout to try to set their defense. We'll take it to Griggsville Perry 34, Camp Point Central 21. It's an Adams Network timeout. If you have that drive and you want to do more with God, then there's opportunity there for you to do that. It's not the typical job that you would expect it to be. Like, it's just super fulfilling. 
When my life needed opportunity, I chose Doc. Loading the kids in the car, brokering peace in the back seat, mastering the snack handoff without even looking. Why are simple things sometimes so complicated? Thankfully, with auto owners, insurance doesn't have to be one of them. We work with independent agents who keep insurance simple, so you can worry about more important things, like figuring out what's growing in that cup holder. That's simple human sense. Contact your local auto owners agents at BNP Insurance Agency, Barber Agency. See Pat Vandevelde, Caleb Vandevelde, or Mary Coltis. They'll find our location at 114 South Madison Street in Pittsfield. You're getting thirsty. Bold. Refreshing. So good. <clears throat> I mean, do. After the timeout taken by Camp Point Central on the Adams Fiber timeout. They trail by 13 to Grigsville Perry and will drop back into the half court defense. Picked up right as soon as Grigsville Perry crossed the half court in a trap. Trying to trap the ball all over. Myers with it to the high post. GP doing a good job staying calm, cool, and collected here with 152 to play. Lip coming in the corner defensive. He'll work the pass to Wyatt Lipkin. Ball tip, but Lane Lipkin and runs it down. Now Woodward right checked Woodward. back into the ball game for the first time in the second half as Dane McAllister took a seat. Here's Wyatt Lipkin. Drives, kicks to Fenson. Just playing a little keep away here are the Tornadoes. Long pass across to Woodward. Works it into the stands and a turnover. Woodward will sit down as McAllister is back in. Turnover number seven against the Tornadoes. 126 left, 34-21 GP on the PCRE scoreboard. Gennenbacher with the left side. Got to be in a hurry here if you're Camp Point Central. Three-point shot, Paven no good. Rebound down to McAllister. This isn't a Panthers offense that's built to score quick, and that's what happens that's why Camp Point can't afford to really get down by many because they want to grind it out on both offense and defense. As we see Nick Moore whistled for his third foul, the third foul against the Panthers, fourth foul against the Panthers with 55.9 seconds to play in the contest. Yes, I know there's a scoreboard here, but it looks like you couldn't tell if it was a five or a nine. And a niner in there? Do have that Valley City education, so sometimes reading is not easy. Did Valley City ever have a school? Yeah, one time. What was their a, mascot? They had a college at one time, Valley City University. What was uh, what was their mascot? No, oh, I don't know. Whatever you want it to be, the Vandals, <laughs> the Sleepy Jacks. Could have been the Rivermen. Yeah. Never know. Lipkman wow, will go to the line to shoot two. That's Wyatt Lipkman. Four for six from there in the ball game. They get four for seven. As Grigsville Perry has the 34-21 lead, 34.2 seconds to play. Wyatt Lipkin splits a pair, give him a dozen. 30 seconds left. Moore has it on the dribble. GP about to win their 22nd game of the season. Pass on the wing goes to Peterson. Down low, knee can't. Kicks it out, Pavin. Dribble drive. Little pull up jumper is no good. Just got a text that the Valley City mascot could have been the Cheeseheads. Could have been. You never know. The but tonight, it's the Tornadoes. 35 21, the victory over Camp Point Central. GP moves to 22 and 4. Camp Point Central drops to 16 and 6. And they're right back in action again tomorrow and Saturday and Monday. And Tuesday, they've got quite the run of games here. And they'll need to try to work out of this little bit of a funk they found themselves in at this point in the year. We take you to the Blessing Health System post-game show where we have final stats and more your way after this. The heart is the hardest working muscle in your body. If something goes wrong with it, you need a medical team that works just as hard. You need Blessing Health's open heart surgery team celebrating 20 years of delivering life-saving care to tri-state residents. Patients and families choose Blessing Health's open heart surgery team for its experience, quality, and heartwarming compassion. Get the most out of your hardworking heart. 
Kate Marable, real estate broker with Hometown Real Estate, would like to say good luck to all area teams and hopes everyone has a successful and healthy season. When you're in the market for a new home or would like to sell your home, be sure to call Kate Marable. Kate is a lifelong resident of the area and has experience in first-time home buyers, FHA, USDA, and VA loans. Call Kate Marable at 217-370-9809. That's 370-9809 for Kate Marable and Hometown Real Estate. Since 1921, Farmer State Bank of Camp Point has been a vital part of our community's history. We are proud of our growth, our community leadership, and our success, which is only possible because of all those who share this journey with us. We are grateful to the generations of loyal customers, families, businesses, employees, officers, and directors who have shaped not only our story, but our entire communities. Thank you. We look forward to serving you and your future generations for the next 100 years. Farmer State Bank and Camp Point, together we are a strong United Community. Stotsy Automotive and Tire, located at 201 Adams Street in Camp Point, Illinois, is your local automotive repair shop. Whether you need an oil change, brake job, alignment engine repair, or new tires, Stotsy Automotive is here with honest and competitive pricing. Call Reagan and his team today to schedule your appointment. 217-740-5010. That's 217-740-5010 for Stotsy Automotive and Tire. I'm Chris Nichols with PCRE Real Estate and Auction here in Pittsfield. For 15 years now, I've been specializing in selling farmland and hunting properties, along with homes and commercial real estate. Whether it's helping a seller get a premium price out of their home or assisting a buyer to find the farm of their dreams, I pride myself on providing elite customer service. Give me a call today at 217-473-3777 if I can help with any of your real estate needs. Or feel free to jump on our website at pcrerealestate.com. Welcome back on the Blessing Health System post-game show. Glad to be joined by Garrett White, the head coach of the Griggsville Perry Tornadoes. And coach, a big one, the 22nd victory of the season, but kind of got a little bit of a monkey off your back. This Camp Point Central team's had your number for a while. Yeah. Thought you might have had him at Winchester with a nine-point lead in the third. Your kids didn't leave any doubt here tonight. Yeah, we talked about that at practice last night and before the game. It, it, this could potentially be, unless we meet at the bowl, could potentially be uh, the last time playing these guys. And, uh, four of our guys had played travel ball with three of their guys for a long time. and It's been a friendly rivalry, a very respectful rivalry, and it's always fun going against these guys. But, yeah, uh, I don't know how many times in a row they'd beat us, but we hadn't beat them since seventh grade. So, um, I, I, jokingly, I was saying they beat you like 38 times in a row. It's time to step up and get over the hump. And uh, defense led the way for us to do that tonight. I mean, the defense has been impressive this season. I think you're like top two defensive points allowed per game in Class 1A, and that, that doesn't come by accident. No, uh, actually, yeah, we're, no, we're number one, and we take a lot of pride in that. And actually, tonight's game matched up the top two teams for uh, lowest scoring and scoring average against us in the state. And uh, we weren't very happy the other night. Give, give Pleasant Hill credit, but they scored 43 on us. And so we had a tough, hard-nosed practice yesterday and got back to the basics and got back to some toughness-type things. And uh, it showed tonight, held, held an excellent camp point team to, to 21. We knew it would be low scoring. We knew it would be a grind. And uh, glad we were able to, to make more plays, especially the second half. One of Damon's favorite things to talk about before every time you play is limiting the other team to second-chance opportunities. I think you gave up one tonight. Yeah. And uh, – Against this Camp Point team, um, obviously we didn't go very deep tonight. It was just kind of a matchup thing, and we felt that our 6'3", 6'4", 6'5", guys on the back line could give them problems with their length because they're a very strong physical team, but they're not the tallest team. And we thought that could give them some problems and, and lead us to, uh, to clearing the boards hopefully a little bit better. And, uh, I, yeah, I thought that was a, a big part of it. And, you know, I told those guys after the game that didn't get in much, you're going to be called upon here in, in the games going ahead. It was just a, a matchup type thing tonight, and uh, the five that played the whole night answered the bell. Yeah, and Coach, you know, coming into tonight, we talked in the uh, before the game. Obviously, Garrett Woodward missed yesterday's practice, sick. Brody Rush, unable to be here tonight, sick. Logan Fensick, I mean, call him a game-time decision. He was a <laughs> questionable for school today based upon being sick. But, you know, Michael Myers, Wyatt Lipkin, we're accustomed to seeing them at the top of the scores, scoring column for your squad. But, you know, to me, tonight, Logan Fensick might have been his coming out party. And we, we talked there, that and one he had late. 
I, I mentioned to Charlie, I don't know if that's a shot that Logan makes early in the season. I feel like he's gotten stronger, but he's learned how to be more aggressive as the season has went on. Yeah, the, the emergence of him has been key for us here. Um, he had a great summer. last. He eased into high school his freshman year. He was injured the whole time. Um, his sophomore year um, didn't get much time on the varsity, and we didn't have many JV games. He had a great summer for us, and obviously he's really grown, and he's just gotten better and better throughout this season. He's got a real knack of just making basketball plays. He's a good cutter. Uh, he's a good shooter if you leave him open, and obviously 6'5 with length uh, gives teams problems uh, with his defense. And, you know, I thought another key for you guys tonight, not in the scoring column, but was Dane McAllister. I've Dane for seven rebounds, but one thing I've noticed about Dane is he's one of your best passers on those backdoor cuts. He can find the smallest space to thread the needle, and there's probably times where Dane throws that pass, and it's one of those, no, 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 all right, good job. But I thought Dane... Stayed out of foul trouble tonight. Really played a good job for your squad. Yeah, that's exactly right with Dane, and he's been he's been kind of down in the dumps. You know, ball hadn't been going in the hoop. He hadn't been scoring a whole lot of points this season. But I've explained to him his value on this team is as the middle defender of our two three zone. He does an excellent job there of protecting the paint. And then he, like you said, you nailed it. His best attribute on offense is his passing, and he he finds backdoor cuts. He makes good decisions with his passing. And especially when he's in the middle of our of our wheel offense there, he does some good things. Seniors usually play a little different this time of the year. Man, you've got a good group of seniors. And we talked about before the game, teams are remembered by how they do in the postseason. Your team seems like they're still on that upward trajectory, haven't reached that ceiling yet, but it's got to be exciting knowing that's just around the corner. It is. Um, and, and we talked about that early in the year after the, the Pittsfield and West Central back-to-back -back losses. Um, we don't want to be playing our best ball in December. We want to be playing our best ball in February and March, and tonight was certainly a step in the right direction. And I, I told them, look, you won seven, lost two. Won seven, lost two. We had won seven for a third straight time going into this game. Let's not let it happen for a third time, and let's kind of get the monkey off our back and beat one of these physical teams that we are very familiar with, and they know our kids really well, like Pittsfield West Central Camp Point. And uh, so we're, we're very happy with this win, but it doesn't get any easier. We turn around and uh, go to Franklin on Tuesday, which is going to be a pivotal, pivotal game in our subsectional seating. We know that they nobody plays harder than uh, Franklin and Waverly kids. Final on this one, though, big win for the Tornadoes, 35-21 over Central. Coach, we appreciate the time. Thank you. That's Garrett White here on the uh, Blessing Health System post-game show with locations throughout the region. Blessing Health System is here to serve you and your family. No matter if you need walk-in, primary specialty, or emergency medicine, they have a location to serve you. Learn more at BlessingHealth.org. And, Damon, let's take a look at some of those final stats. Well, for the Campoint Central Panthers, they shot just 8 of 29 from the field in this one for 28%. They were 6 of 17 from the two and just 2 of 12 from the three-point line. Scoring for the Panthers in this ball game, Gavin Blewett with two, Elijah Gennenbacher with five, Drew Pavin with six, and Nick Moore with eight points for the Panthers. For Grigsville Perry, they shot 11 of 17 from the two. They struggled from behind the three-point line just like the Panthers as they, too, were only two of 12 from behind the arc, finishing 13 of 29 from the field for 45% and seven of 11 from the charity stripe for 63%. Scoring for the Tornadoes, Lane Lipkman with three points. Logan Fentick with nine points to go along with six rebounds. Michael Myers with 11 points and six boards. And Wyatt Lipman leading the Tornadoes in scoring with 12 points. Time to name our player of the game. It's presented by Edward Jones Financial Advisor, Derek Harris. Financial investments are important, but so are the investments of time, patience, and encouragement our young athletes receive from their coaches, teachers, parents, and mentors. Derek Harris, your Edward Jones Financial Advisor, understands this. That's why he's proudly supporting the Player of the Game Award on Central Illinois Sports. And I agree, I think you hit the nail on the head. Even though Logan Fensick wasn't huge in the scoring column, he did a lot of the little things right to help his team get over the hump and beat those Camp Point Central squad. Yeah, Fensick finishes with nine points to go along with six rebounds in the ball game, And Fensick had four points at the half. But really late in the ball game, really put the final nail in the coffin on that big clutch and one play where he fought through the contact to get the bucket but Fensick those nine points and six rebounds did a really good job and a big victory for this Grigsville Perry squad as they were able to get revenge 
for one of their four losses on the season. Well, we better go before the lights get turned out here from the Nick at Griggs Wolf Perry for the birthday boy, John Hull. Happy 38th birthday. You only get to do that one time. Damon Emmerich, uh, I don't even know how old you are, but I know it's not your birthday. I'm Charlie Hull. Thank you for joining us for high school boys basketball action on Central Illinois Sports. We'll see you Saturday bright and early for the ISA 7th grade state finals. We hope you'll join us then for another Central Illinois Sports presentation.